Welcome viewers to Historical Journeys. There's a boat setting out from the Italian town of Stenic Margarita Ligure. Notwithstanding high waves making the excursion undesirable, it requires 60 or so minutes to arrive at its objective, where a party of jumpers enter the water and start battling their direction through the furious ocean. It's all worth the effort, however, for the surprising sight of a the Second Great War submarine, one with a phenomenal yet to some degree disturbing history. This U-boat burned through 61 years lost underneath the waves until jumpers on Earth to its nerve-wracking, privileged insights. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It only takes a second, and you won't miss any of our future videos. Let's get started. Jumpers have been visiting the Christ of the Chasm for the greater part hundred years. However, this specific submarine remaining part sound, and the quest for it has taken wayfarers almost 90 meters beneath the outer layer of the Mediterranean Ocean. Indeed, on the off chance that they found the highest point of the submarine, they would need to go down 300 feet. However, it was one more 100 feet before they arrived at the base, which starts from World War II. During its short help, the submarine saw battle and was sunk inside a portion of 10 years. It appears to be astonishing that a huge and strong boat could lie undisturbed for such a long time and simply take a gander at the historical backdrop of the EU-455, which confronted English big haulers in the Atlantic and French in the Mediterranean. It was essential for what was portrayed as a bunch of risky German submarines. The U-boat was a focal piece of German technique in the Second Great War, short for U-boat or U-boat. These submarines were first found in the Second Great War when they were utilized to sink unified ships. All Germany needed to leave its submarines after the conflict, however development continued during the 1930s. At the point when World War II began in 1939, Germany had 57 submarines and extraordinary England was caught off guard for submarine fighting. Merchant ships were initially proud of the water, where they quickly achieved a number of significant successes. Boats of the line and plane-carrying warships were gone after across the Atlantic, in one case even at the English maritime base at Scapa Stream off the Bank of Scotland. During these early times of U-boat assaults, the VIB was the boat of decision. Yet the Germans didn't stop there. Soon, the upgraded engines and weapons of the very reliable VI EC will be available. Cap Lieutenant was the original commander, Hans Henrik de Sola. However, he before long moved to the Torpedo Inspectorate in the fall of 1942 and be supplanted by Cap Lieutenant Hans Martin Sheep. U-455 was and stays an amazing looking vessel 200 feet in length, 31 feet high and 52 feet wide. It could travel more than 750 feet below the surface at close to 18 knots once it entered the ocean's depths, displaying 769 tons of seawater above water and an additional 100 tons below. Furthermore, obviously, this was a vessel of war, so it came very much loaded with weapons. These weapons included a naval gun and an anti-aircraft gun, as well as 14 torpedoes that could be fired from one of five torpedo tubes. There might have been any place somewhere in the range of 40 and 60 individuals to man these weapons and pilot the sub, and the team on its last mission remained at 51 altogether, in addition to the fact that it was very much outfitted, yet the EU-455 likewise didn't travel solo, having a place with a wolf pack. It was one of many submarines that utilized the Mediterranean. This implied that the boats could encompass partnered ships from all sides, permitting them to actually unleash ruin. EU-455 spent under two years adrift, partaking in just 10 watches in 468 days. Of the six watches that occurred in the Wolf Group, it watched the French port multiple times prior to returning. UE-455 sank two boats with a complete load of roughly 14,000 tons. This prompted the expansion of an associated boat of 3,000, 500 tons in the spring of 1943. One of the boats was French and the other two were English. The primary boat was the English Labour, part of a gathering of 7,000 tons, which sank on 3 May 1942, 
after a torpedo assault by UE-455 killed 17. Then on June 11, the freight transport GAOH Jones, weighing just shy of 700 tons, sank, before being handed over to Yang. It's the only ship that Captain Luton and Kieseler would sink, and EU-455 was the only Allied ship that Yang would command to sink. This is a French freight transport, at present on the NAS course. It were dependable, however, the hearts lay by a submarine close to the shoreline of Morocco. There I left for my last home in Tallinn, a city in the south of France. Tallinn is situated in southeast France and on the Mediterranean coast, making it a decent spot to send off EU-455. This is where Tallinn left its last watch in February 1944. It was a member of the crew that built over 140 submarine crews in 1936. He proceeded toward the North African coast to examine the Algerian side and was delivered on April 2, yet entirely stayed quiet. UE-455 was accounted for missing on April 6, yet the area and cause stay a secret. There is no sign that the submarine was taken part in battle so it is impossible that it was harmed by foe ships. The overarching hypothesis at the time was that it was a submarine mishap, yet there was no proof, and no such proof was found until 50 years after the fact, when the submarine was rediscovered off the shoreline of Italy. The submarine sank on April 6, 1994. In the event that the submarine had attempted to turn and head in an orderly fashion to him, there would have been a gigantic blast. Furthermore, we can find in the submarine rails that there was no space for mariners as they went along the 33 vast fall, now that the opening in the base is no more. So what happens now that the last resting spot of this new boat and its group is known? Or then again, would it be a good idea for you to leave all that you found? Indeed, a fighter's last resting place is typically a conflict grave, and that implies it's legitimate. The Tactical Progression Insurance Demonstration of 1986 assigned undersea army bases and brought down plane-carrying warships as safeguarded regions. Then again, there was discussion in the Netherlands when it became exposed that some Dutch submerged war graves were being rescued for salvaged material. This would have been unlawful assuming it included graves ashore. However, there was no particular insurance for indented vessels. So in 2014, the Global Local Area of Submariners Affiliations gave an update ensuring the pillaging of submerged war graves and calling for more grounded lawful securities. Simultaneously, the customary individual rescue jumper had been supplanted by current innovation that could grab lots of depressed metal in a solitary crane hook, whether or not doing so upset human remaining parts. Nearly a thousand Dutch seamen perished in the Battle of Java. A considerable lot of their bodies are currently either in mass graves or unfastened adrift. One of the main American submerged finds of the 21st century was the disaster area of the U.S. at Indianapolis, which sank in 1945, however wasn't rediscovered until 2017. It had been the single most prominent oceanic death toll throughout the entire existence of the U.S. Naval Force. Nearly a thousand seamen were left afloat on floating wreckage but the United States ignored their distress calls because it was suspected that a trap was in place. The greater part of the men died a long time before they were spotted by a pilot soaring over. This made any endeavor to find the Indianapolis undeniably challenging, yet she was in the long run observed to be an exceptional exploration vessel with cutting-edge submerged hardware. However, keeping the location a secret makes it simpler to safeguard it as a war grave. Assurance of U.S. warships is covered by the Submerged Warships Demonstration of 2004, which clarifies that each U Naval Force transport remains U.S. property in any event, when on the sea depths. Plunging for instructive or archaeological reasons is allowed, however just with authorization from the Naval Force. The law likewise safeguards unfamiliar military vessels annihilated in U.S. waters from obstruction. Situated at the lower part of the Mediterranean Ocean, where neighborhood plunging organizations can orchestrate visits, it isn't so distant from other the second great warships, including UJ-2216 
and UJ-2210. There are likewise steamships, some of which date back to the universal conflicts and others as far back as 1891, not in view of their hallowed status as war graves. Yet in addition due to the peril presented by the sites, the destruction of a mine-hit submarine is shrouded in fishing nets that can get the two people and ocean animals. He and his jumping friends later concurred that we had two outstanding plunges on a disaster area that was special on the planet. He and his partners began from Maranzano as opposed to Nick Margarita Ligure and enjoyed the benefit of a GPS to assist them with tracking down the perfect locations. They didn't actually arrive at the lower part of the sea since they were so entranced by what they saw and the mind-boggling size and presence of the submerged lock. Till portrayed how the difficulties and holds up were worth the effort as we filled our heads and eyes with pictures and recollections. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated with our latest videos, subscribing is the way to go. Just click that red button below and become a part of our channel family.